This is How Mountains Are Made by Kathleen Zofield and illustrated by James Hale. How mountains are made. So here we see a couple of friends. Okay. We live in a little town in a valley. There are mountains all around us. I live in a little town in a valley. Well, it's not a little town. I live in the San Gabriel Valley, right? On Saturdays, sometimes we go mountain climbing. We follow a trail through a thick forest. At first, the climb is easy. So we have a couple of buddies going on a mountain hike. Have any of you ever been on a hike in the mountains? So these friends are hiking right now. So at first it was easy, but then it gets steeper and steeper. We stop on a rock ledge halfway up and eat our lunch. When we start out again, we have to walk more slowly. The slope is getting very steep. The forest is thinning out and the trees are shorter. We can see the top of the mountain, but it seems to take forever to get there. And we see one of those friends saying, are we there yet? Maybe if any of you have ever been on a hike or a long walk, you get really tired near the end and you just say, are we almost done? We've been walking forever. We've been hiking forever. Looks like they finally reached the top and they could see out in every direction. There are hardly any trees up here and the land is rocky. We spend a long time looking at the rocks. Here's one with the shape of a seashell in it. This is cool. It's a fossil. Fossils are remains of animals that lived millions of years ago. This mountain is more than 4,000 feet high. That's nearly a mile. There are no oceans up here. How did a sea animal get to the top of this mountain? So they're looking at this fossil of a shell called an ammonite. And it's all the way up on top of a mountain. Which is strange because you shouldn't really find seashells on top of a mountain. So let's find out why that is. The highest mountain in the world is Mount Everest in Nepal. It is 29,028 feet high. That's almost five and a half miles. But fossil seashells have been found on Mount Everest too. So they're saying, our mountain, the mountain that these friends were hiking, is less than one mile above sea level, right? The deep sea plains are between two and three miles below sea level. And Mount Everest would be about this high compared to their mountain. So this is the sea level, and that's where the ocean is, right? And the mountain that they hiked is just a little bit above the level of the ocean, right? And Mount Everest, look how tall that is above sea level, right? And this dog is just dreaming of a bone. So millions of years ago, Mount Everest was not a mountain at all. It was a flat plain under an ocean. Our mountain was a flat plain under an ocean too. All sorts of sea animals lived right here, but that was a long, long time ago. Many changes have happened since then. So this illustration is what the top of Mount Everest looked like millions and millions and millions of years ago, when the sea level was much higher, right? Much higher. Now it's down here. So look at all those different types of plants and animals that lived in the ancient ocean. And there's the ammonite. The earth is always changing. Old mountains disappear and are worn down by the wind, ice, and rain, and new mountains form where there are no mountains before. We can't see the changes happening, though. Mountains are built up and worn down gradually over hundreds of millions of years. When we look at the earth, all we see are rocks and soil and trees and other plants growing in the soil. But if we could look inside the earth, we could see that it's made up of different layers. The surface of the earth is the first layer. It is made of soil and the rocks that we see around us all the time. 
Just beneath the surface, with all the rocks and dirt and earthworms, is the rocky layer, about 35 miles thick, called the Earth's crust. Beneath the crust is a layer of solid rock, about 60 miles thick, right? The crust and this thick rock layer together form an outer shell called the lithosphere. So beneath our feet, right, we see this grass and the soil and the dirt, and that's the first layer of the crust. But beneath that, it's solid rock, right? And that big 90-mile chunk of Earth is called the lithosphere. All of that is called the lithosphere, okay? And that's what's underneath us at all times. And that lithosphere, that big chunk of rock, is broken into pieces called plates. The plates are huge. There are eight major plates and several smaller ones. So all those big chunks of lithosphere are, they're kind of like if you dropped a plate on the ground and it shattered, right? So there are eight major plates. We live on the North American plate. This is our chunk of lithosphere, right? This plate right here. So under the outer shell is a layer of hot, partly melted rock called magma. The rock plates float on top of the magma. The Earth's plates are always in motion, and they've been moving for hundreds of millions of years. Most scientists believe that all the mountains on Earth were formed by slow movements in the Earth's outer shell. And we see our buddy here, he says, the plates move slowly over the magma, just a few inches per year. So our layer of solid rock, the lithosphere, that is resting on top of slow-moving, partially melted rock, very, very, very hot, called magma. And since magma is part liquid, we're always moving very slowly, a couple inches a year, right? Just a few inches every year. Our whole plate is moving. But mountains in different parts of the world look very different from one another. As we can see here, some have sharp pointy peaks, others are more rounded, others are block shaped, and a few shaped like tall cones. Maybe you've seen some of these mountains. Maybe you recognize some of these types of mountains. And that's because different parts of the earth, that's because in different parts of the earth, the outer shell moves in different ways. In some places, two plates press against each other. The tremendous pressure forces the crust to lift and fold over itself. Great, great waves of rock are pushed up and sharp craggy mountains are formed. And our friend here, he has a, a fun little experiment. If you have a heavy dish towel or a hand towel, you can see how this folding happens. So if you get a towel and you scrunch it up, that's how the mountains are made because our plates are moving and if two plates collide with each other, they're gonna go up like this and that forms sharp pointy mountains, right? And this happens very slowly because these plates are moving a couple of inches per year. So over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of million years, all those inches add up to big, tall, pointy mountains, right? So, here's our, our little experiment here. Lay a towel flat on the table and put your hands down, one on each end. Slowly, slowly slide your hands toward each other, and the folds and ridges that appear in the middle of the tower are like of the towel are like the folds and ridges that form great mountains when two plates press against each other. So if you have a flat surface, uh, which unfortunately I don't have out here, sorry about that, and a towel or even a piece of paper, and you scrunch it up, that's the same process on how mountains are made. That's how they move. That's how the plates move. In other places, though, so that's not how all mountains are made. In other places, pressure deep within the earth pulls and stretches the crust. The stretching causes long cracks or fault lines through the crust. And these are called fault block mountains. The crust on one side of a crack may slide upward slowly, while the crust on the other side pushes downward. Block-shaped mountains are formed this way. Right? So that's another way that mountains can be made. 
with this magma pushing up and all that pressure almost like a like a balloon pushing up pushing up and it forms blocks right fault block mountains here's another type of mountain sometimes the crust does not fold or crack sometimes magma pushes through a vent in the solid rock layer it collects in a pocket under the crust the pocket of magma grows larger until it bends the crust upward when this happens, a high dome is formed. Rain and wind and ice wash away the softer rocks above, and rounded peaks and valleys appear. So there the magma seeps through, right? Which is what we're all kind of floating on. And it seeps through, and it creates this uh, little bubble almost. And that makes dome mountains. In a few other places, plates are moving away from one another. This usually happens deep under the oceans. When it hits the cool ocean water, the magma becomes solid. Great underwater mountain ranges are built. So that's when the plates are pulling apart like this, and the magma comes through, and it hits the cold water, and it becomes solid, right? Solid rock. And that happens deep, deep, deep under the oceans. And this one is the most dramatic a volcano. And that happens when uh, once in a while a small crack or vent forms in the lithosphere, sometimes right in the middle of a plate. Red hot magma pushes up through the crack. When it gets to the surface of the earth, the magma cools and hardens. Lava and ash build up around the crack, making the land higher and higher, and a cone shaped volcanic mountain is formed. Once magma reaches the surface, it's called lava. So the magma comes up through a crack, through the lithosphere, and explodes through the top. And all of that stuff that comes out, it keeps building up, building up, and it forms a volcano. Right? Mountains have been around for hundreds of millions of years. Others are still being built right now right in front of our eyes, although it's very, very slow, they could still be growing. The mountain we climb is an old mountain. The fossil we found can tell us a lot about how old our mountain is. Scientists have a special way of telling the age of a fossil. This one is nearly 280 million years old. That means the sea animal that they found was actually swimming there 280 million of years ago, right? It died, it sank to the bottom, and was buried in the sand and mud. It must have been buried sometime just before our mountain began to be born. So that fossil is a remnant of a living thing, something that used to swim around, right? Something that used to swim in an ocean, died, was buried in the mud, and then over millions of years, 280 million years, a mountain formed, and uh, its remains were left for our friends to find. I think that's really, really cool. So, we know that the land here began to rise 280 million years ago, right, from the fossil. And from the shape of the mountain, we can tell it was formed by the folding of the crust. Like the towel experiment there, because these mountains are really sharp, that means two plates hit each other, right, and slowly started building up. Two huge plates slowly pressed against each other. The land rose higher, and the sea disappeared. Over millions of years, the crust let folded up in tremendous waves. This mountains and other mountains around our town were once much higher than they are now. They were sharp and craggy. Now, they are a bit lower and smoother. For millions of years, rain, wind, and ice have worn our mountains down. Millions of years from now, the rain, wind, and ice will have worn them down completely. So this was millions of years ago, right? See a little dinosaur there? Mountains are very tall and sharp and pointy. And now, they're a little bit less tall and sharp and pointy. And millions of years from today, it's all going to be kind of uh, eroded away 
by the wind, the ice, and the rain, right? So they're, all the, the elements are going to keep eating away at our mountains until it looks like that, like this. It's going to take millions and millions of years, though. Mount Everest is a younger mountain. It's still sharp and craggy, and it's still being pushed up higher. Mount Everest may be growing as much as two inches a year. So Mount Everest is still growing. It's still growing, although it's kind of hard to notice a change. Do you think our friends are going to climb Mount Everest? They don't think so. We're not going to try to climb Mount Everest. This mountain was high enough for us. And that's the end of their journey there today. And so, the next time you look at a mountain, if you're outside or if you're on a hike, you can think to yourself, how was that mountain made, right? And remember that asking questions about our natural world, like asking about how mountains are made, it helps inspire wonder and curiosity about all the amazing things that surround us every day. So, thank you all for joining me for Storytime Live today. I hope that you are inspired about our natural world and I hope you all have a great and safe weekend, and we hope to see you back at the museum soon. Thank you all.